together. It was a wonderful, wonderful lunch. And uh, one of my problem, biggest problems is not keeping you awake, it's keeping me awake. And uh, so I, I'm saying that this will be a little shorter than normal we hope uh, for this afternoon. What I'd like to talk about for just a few minutes is about lions. One of my favorite shows, I don't know if you remember the Wild Kingdom, I forget the name of it, Wild Kingdom or Wild Wild Kingdom from years ago. And uh, I love animals and especially watching them in the, in the safari wild and all. But if you remember, uh, probably some of the different programs were about lions and tigers and about lions and their prey. And uh, lions <coughs> have a period of time like all creatures when they're stronger and then they can actually get old and, and, and die out eventually. But the, the strong uh, lions have, have a certain strategy uh, naturally uh, about how they eat. And uh, on the program, I remember a strong lion takes off after a deer or a gazelle or an antelope usually. You know, they can, you know, hop, you know, long distances. Uh, the lion is pretty fast too. And uh, if you can remember some of those scenes about how the, the, the prey uh, usually is, is in a group. And then as the lion chases, they try to kind of get one by itself. Uh, when all the group goes that way and one straggler goes this way. <laughs> and then uh, it's a lot easier for the lion to have lunch. And so we're going to talk about for a few minutes about how not to be the lion's lunch. How can we stay out of the lion's mouth? And uh, so if we're going to look at just a few things. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and also verse 9. God says this to us, be sober and be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a what? A roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. And so God says that his adversary, our adversary, is the devil. And the devil walks about like a roaring lion. There are people that believe that God is dead and also believe that Satan is dead. I believe we're, we're here for a lot of different reasons, but that there's not actually a spiritual war going on. Well, if we believe the Bible, if we believe God's word, the devil is alive. Uh, and he's, he's sickly well, if you want to put it that way. And he walks about on our earth like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so uh, how is it that we can not be devoured? What is it we're going to do that will keep us out of the lion's mouth? How does the lion... Uh, look for his lunch. Let's put it that way. Well, in 1 Peter chapter 2, in the same book, the Bible says there's six different ways I have here. And one is the lion gets his lunch by going after the small. The lion doesn't attack the, the large, but attacks the smaller ones. So 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2 says, Laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking, here it is as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And so the lion gets his lunch by looking for young in the faith, those that are beginning, the small, those that are just, just been baptized. Uh, one of the things I always say, my dad told me this when I was baptized, he says, now, told Ron this, now, now you're really in trouble because you've made the, the devil mad. The devil wants you now. Once you have been baptized, you've been added to the kingdom, that's when you really should have to walk, look out. And so as newborn that babes desire the pure milk of the word. Because when we are young, when we are small, when we are drinking uh, only milk and not eating meat, uh, that's what the one, the one that the lion, the devil, goes after. So the lion gets his lunch by attacking the small or the very young. Number two, he gets his lunch by attacking the slow, right? Goes after those that are slow. If you look at Hebrews chapter 5, just a book or so before, in Hebrews 5, verse 12 through 14, the writer said that by the time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both a good and evil. 
And so these are those that are slow to grow. There are some that are uh, young uh, babes and toddlers, as we very well know, but mothers worry about uh, their, their babies pretty much all their life. But as they're younger and growing from baby to, to, to toddler and, and on, uh, you know, they're, they're worried that they're going to continue to be in diapers and they're not potty trained quick enough and not eating the right foods and that they'll stay a babe and maybe other things. So the Bible says that he who partakes of milk is unskilled in the word for he is a babe. And so uh, Satan, the lion, uh, the lion uh, goes after those that are slow to grow. Uh, it's important that, that as we are uh, baptized and, and as we look at growing, that we make sure that we, we learn and we, we are active in our faith. The, the, the next one is those that are sick with. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. And these are those that are worldly. Now, there are Christians that are carnal, that are worldly. And Paul talks about that. It says, Brethren, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal or worldly, fleshly people, Christians, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? You remember that the church of Corinth was a church that was divided. It was not unified. There were contentions between different ones. In 1 Corinthians 1, Paul says, some of you say, I am a Paul, and I am a, a Paulus, and others, I am a Christ. And he says, I'm thankful that I didn't baptize any of you. Of you. Uh, not that he wasn't thankful <coughs> that he didn't baptize, but he didn't want to be uh, strifeful and, and this divisive. And so he says here, uh, I couldn't speak to you as to adults, but as to uh, babes in Christ. And so those that are babes in Christ that are, it says, still carnal are those that are sick. There are those that are baptized that, for whatever reason, are not able to, to grow, slow in growth, uh, and they are carnal. They are carnal. And uh, they're sickly, uh, spiritually sick. And then there's the stragglers. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 talks about those that are stragglers. Uh, in Luke chapter 15, before that, Luke 15, verses 3 through 7. Luke 15, 3 through 7. Jesus was speaking and he said the parable in a parable. What man, if you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Uh, as you know, a sheep do not stay together. They're easily scared. They run off. It's easy for one sheep or more to in a group, just kind of just wander off, kind of sometimes can run off a mountain or a ditch or, or whatever. They just, they just wander off. And they're stragglers. And so uh, the Bible talks here, Jesus does about uh, the parable of the lost sheep, that if you have a hundred sheep, a good shepherd will leave the 99 and go looking for the one. It's not easy to do that, but as a shepherd who wants to keep his hundred sheep together, and many times shepherds love their sheep, uh, they will not let the sheep run off and be stragglers. And so uh, in, in life, one of the hardest things in ministry is to keep the congregation together, keep people uh, coming, look after those that haven't been here for a while, that are straggling, that are running off or, or wandering away for whatever reason. Well, the lion uh, will go after those. After those that are by themselves, one of the greatest strategies of Satan is to isolate one of the greatest fears that I have is that people think that they are strong by themselves. Or they will be able to have worship in their house by themselves, with their family, which many times doesn't happen, or at the campsite, or, or wherever it may be. And I mentioned I've had a, a cousin that, that, that attempts to do that. He's not doing very well uh, with camping and having their worship service wherever, wherever they go. 
Uh, they're weak and they're straggling and they're struggling. Uh, this particular family uh, member, cousin of mine, uh, what Satan goes through. When they're weak and they're isolated, uh, also I, I believe that when we get by ourselves and we begin to tell ourselves uh, things, we begin to talk to ourselves. One of the worst people to talk to is to talk to ourselves about spiritual things because many times we don't grow by ourselves very well. We need someone else to teach or to preach or to, to exchange ideas. And so the straggler, the lion goes after the straggler. And then he also goes after the sleeper, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 uh, and verse 12. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse uh, 12. And also, uh, he who thinks uh, he stands, take heed, uh, lest he fall, lest he fall. There are those that are, are caught in their own deception and their own lies and the illusion that they are strong or that they're okay. Uh, they're strong spiritually. Don't, don't visit me. Don't bother me. I'm fine. And actually they are uh, deceiving themselves. And they're what we call sleepers. And there's the injured. Galatians chapter 5, verse 15. Talks about in, in a group of people that in a congregation, maybe. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. In a congregation like the church at Corinth, they were divided, and Paul asked different women to get along with one another because they were they were talking uh, contentiously about one another and dividing the congregation. Well, here in Galatians, Paul says, if you bite, as a church, as members, if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. And so it's Important that we that we encourage and build one another up and, and not complain and not uh, talk about one another in, in a negative sense. To confront sin, yes, but to not uh, be uh, injuring one another. And so, what can we do to stay out of the lion's mouth? If you look at First Peter chapter five, back to the original scripture, in First Peter five and nine, it says we're to be sober, uh, not be drunk. Doesn't mean with alcohol. It just means be in your right mind. Be vigilant. Uh, always be vigilant. It's hard to always be vigilant. But he says be vigilant because your adversary walks about like a roaring lion. And while we're thinking uh, <coughs> of other things, uh, he seeks whom he may devour. So what can we do? We can resist him. We're actually to resist the, you know, the devil. Resist temptation. We're to run from uh, many of the temptations. Be steadfast in the faith. Steadfast means slowly continuing on. Be strong, stable, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. One of the greatest things about going to places like polishing the pool, when you realize that, you know what, we're kind of all in the same boat. We're homeschoolers or, or, or we're uh, in a small congregation of 25 on the back side of whatever, you know, in, in Alaska or, or whatever it may be. We, there's, we, we begin to understand that we're not in this by ourselves. Not only is God in Christ, but, but there are other members of the church that are uh, having difficulties uh, growing their congregations and, and, and young people that are leaving the church and becoming atheists. And so uh, we come together and we exchange those ideas and we kind of have a support group. And so we are to resist, uh, re resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. We have a large brotherhood. There are millions of Christians in the United States and millions throughout the world. There are tens of thousands of congregations, most of them not over about 60 or 70, believe it or not. Most of the congregations in the United States are not two, three, four, five hundred. Those are the exception. And then you look at James chapter 4. James <coughs> chapter 4 and verse 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How is it that we can avoid the lion's lunch, the lion's mouth? We can, one, submit to God. That means giving in to God. God created us. He knows who we are and, and how we are made. And he understands our need for someone to be God. And if we don't make God God, then we will become God. We will become our own God. And that's not a good thing. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We are actually to resist the devil. We are to hate evil. We are to shun evil. And so one of the greatest examples of someone that was able to stay out of uh, the, the lion's mouth uh, was, was Job. Uh, you remember in Job chapter 1, 
uh, verse 22, uh, that he had uh, had all of the different uh, things happen to him. But in the verse 22, in all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. He was faithful. He was faithful. And so that's the message for today. If you want to be out of the lion's mouth and stay from it, and so uh, be careful not to be by yourself and isolated. Don't be a straggler. Uh, avoid becoming spiritually sick. Slick, uh, sick. Uh, try to, to, to be fast, not slow in your growth. Learn as much as you can. Uh, study the Bible. Study, read books. Go to college in the pulpit or free harbor lectures or whatever it may be like many of the, the ones here. Uh, study and watch YouTube and many other places where they can get that spiritual nourishment. Uh, don't injure one another by biting and devouring one another, but stay out of the lion's mouth by submitting to God. And, and it says that the devil will flee from us. Now, it's for a time. In Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was tempted, it was just for a time, wasn't it? Jesus was tempted three times. He responded with the scriptures, but it says for a period of time, for a season, he left. So Christ was tempted, but he won over the temptations because he stayed close to his father. And he prayed in the morning time. Uh, for long periods of time, he kept in communication with his father. So today, don't be the lion's lunch. Don't be the lion's meal. Remember that the devil is a roaring lion, sick that you may devour. We're going to leave here in just a few minutes in the comfort of our air conditioning, with all the food in there, and, and with, with the company of one another. And it's easy to be spiritual and to be strong uh, and to resist the devil when we're together. But you know when you get out there on Monday morning and you get that phone call uh, from somebody or someone cuts you off in traffic, someone breaks into your house and all kinds of things happen, it's a little harder, a little harder to resist the devil. It's easy to fall back into the ways of the world and to, to say things or to do things or to think things that make us do things that, uh, that are wrong and that are not sanctioned by God. So today, we offer the invitation by tradition every time we're together. If there's anyone that needs to confess the fault or ask for the prayers of the church or for strength as Blake did this morning, he was a great example. Probably every one of us could come forward and write a note like that and say, you know what we need prayers as, as a parent or a husband, wife, Christian, to be the light, to do what he asks us to do, God. But if you need to do that, probably then please come as we stand as we sing. Drink, wash, and